believe that in life we also have to be in the right time at the right place you know right. sometimes you may be very good or but you if you are not a, if you if you don't have a certain element of luck yeah. um, you also need it i mean yeah, luck no, is not everything yeah. But you also need it. And I think I've got it, you know. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm very honored uh, because I think I've got a little bit of luck as well. And then I took very well the opportunities. Oh, as, let's just knock on the wood here. Hi, everyone. And welcome back to the Sporting Global Podcast. And to Darren... Today I'm here with Luis Costa. And Luis, first of all, thanks for for taking the time. How's how's everything going? Everything's okay. Thank you very much. And it is my pleasure to take the time to be here with you. So I'm really uh, so expecting for this conversation to to <laughs> go forward. Well, that's great. I mean, like you have a lot of great knowledge, and we're going to share a lot of cool insights from you. And as All of you can see, we have some special guests with here as well, Natalia and Bell. Uh, they're both uh, mentees of Sporting Global Mentorship Program Season One, and stay tuned for Season Two starting in September. I mean, like that's just something that we, we we built in order to help you know young young students and sport professionals having the best chance to enter the sport industry. But they're they're here, you know, as a way of you know getting some extra insights, getting some extra knowledge, and at the end, you know, having the chance to ask their own personal questions to Lewis as well. So it's going to be very exciting. And, and it's, of course, a pleasure having both of you here as well, Natalia and Bell. Thanks. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, Lewis, I mean, like, we're just going to start kick things off, you know, we kind of like, let us let, let us hear a little bit about your journey in the business and startup world. Like, take us take us a little bit back to like how it all started. Uh, take us a little bit through yeah. the journey. Well, actually, I have quite an interesting journey. We love because that. I, well, because I, stu I studied civil engineering as right. my background here in Lisbon, so in Portugal. I studied five years civil engineering. And when I was graduating in university, I already started also to work in, in a laboratory that, that there is in Lisbon for civil engineering. So my whole career was basically designed to be a civil engineer. Right. I even did a master's on geotechnical engineering. Okay, so a very specific yeah. uh, area of technical uh, expertise within civil engineering. And when I was doing the master's, uh, particularly writing it, because we had classes and it was also, uh, we had to, wrote, to write a, a thesis, I started to think about my life in the future, what I wanted from my life, and I, I saw all the different paths that I could take. Right. And I and I started to eliminate some of them that I didn't want to go for for them, and I chose one. And I wanted to be a project manager in projects in civil engineering projects. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, uh, I applied to a multinational company that was starting their operations here in Portugal. So it was, uh, that was P&G, Procter & Gamble. Probably right. the majority of you know what, it, what is P&G. It's one of the major uh, fast moving consumer goods companies in the world. Yeah. At the time they were starting in Portugal. So it was a kind of uh, startup operation, you can right. say it. Right. Uh, and that was the challenge. The challenge that I had was to uh, to uh, to found and to and to initiate the, the customer service and the logistics department in PNG Portugal right. and I was and I challenged and the, at that time I looked at it at, to, at this opportunity like I don't know if uh, this is going to be my career or not right. this seems like a very interesting thing that uh, I want to do I want to learn a lot from it and that's what I did and it was 10 years in PNG okay so <laughs> what was a thing that initially was I was a little bit uh, suspicious and uh, yeah. and going into the dark because really I was a civil engineering yeah. uh, a civil engineer I was not a manager but then I I was really lucky 
to uh, to to join PNG in Portugal because the environment was uh, was a startup environment, so that right. was very very interesting, yeah. and it was a, a very cool and very learning environment. And really, PNG provided me all the opportunities to learn and to develop in my career. So it was early on those days that I started to to uh, to learn about the importance uh, of certain factors in your life being yeah. uh, uh, being success factors being soft skills etc and PNG because they have also a promotion a promotion from within career from within a strategy so everybody in PNG starts at the bottom so right. they go up the ladder uh, but starting always on the bottom um, I was very lucky. Ten years after, I was abroad. I was alone. My wife didn't join me, so I wanted to come back to Portugal. And I joined. The, uh, and I was. I was. I was also very lucky to join a telecommunications company, which mm -hmm. was also uh, not a startup, but on 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 their early days. So we right, were right. on the early days of the telecommunication industry. This was back in 19, back in 2001. So it seems very far away, but <laughs> it was already in the new millennium. And again, there I was very lucky because I went through all the, uh, what was the mobile, what was the internet supply providers, what was the integration of uh, fixed voice with fixed internet, with mobile internet, with the launch of TV, with the launch of pay TV, with the launch of uh, movies, etc. So I was very lucky to work on that industry for 14 years. It is one of the leading industries in the world. It moves the world forward nowadays, telecommunications, as you all right. know. And so again, it was a kind of a very young environment, very young people. Uh, everything was new. We had to do everything from scratch. So very interesting. Yeah. Then I, st I, I did some more things in my, in my life and now I'm doing consulting. Basically, uh, my main my main activity nowadays on top of uh, consulting is being a mentor for startups and um, and trying to pass some of the experiences some of the knowledge that i have acquired over uh, my professional experience which was which was somehow quite rich i, I think i was very lucky yeah. no i think i think we, i believe that in life we also have to be in the right time at the right place you know right. sometimes you may be very good or but you if you are not uh, if you if you don't have a certain element of luck yeah. um, you also need it i mean yeah, luck no, is not everything yeah. but you also need it and i think i've got it you know yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very honored uh, because i think i've got a little bit of luck as well and then i took very well the opportunities well, let's just as knock on the wood here to just make sure you keep keep that luck going you know <laughs> <laughs> yes we will. But it, it, it's, it's important i mean like i think it's a um, it's a very key thing and i mean like i always believe that everything happens for a reason you know and sort of yeah. like how you utilize some bad opportunities that are coming with you and i mean like there's always you need you need a little bit of luck in your life and i always had like you know a friend of mine says like why are you so lucky and i was like I don't know, like maybe I am, maybe I'm not, but it's just part of that, like you have to put yourself out there in order to kind of like gain that luck too. You know, it, it's sort of like part of that uh, process. And I'm sure, you know, uh, like, like, like yourself, you kind of like, you know, ended up in these positions, you know, obviously because of the work that you did, you know, yeah. beforehand and, and kind of like, you know, put that extra effort up. It has also a lot to do with your attitude in life. Since yeah. my, I mean, since my childhood, I was always studying in school, learning music, doing sports, uh, everything, learning English. So right. from an early start, from, I mean, as far as I can remember since my seven years or eight years old, I've always had a busy agenda. You know, yeah. I've always <laughs> been very busy and I've always been educated to not being quiet. I mean, go for the opportunities, uh, go for it, trying, 
uh, trying is very important without uh, the fear of the failure. Because if you fear failure, you never try. And if you never try, you are not active. You are not doing things. So I've always, on my personal and on my professional life, I've been always very busy. This is why I take also the challenge to give classes or to give trainings or or to th things beyond uh, the timetable or the hours that I have on a daily basis. I think it's right. very important also that that kind of attitude. Okay. So 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 Don and Natalia, this is one of your notes. <laughs> this should be one of your notes to write down for sure. Um, and, and I wanted to move on a little bit about obviously your, your kind of like your role as a senior manager, why, winning scientific management. Um, tell us a little bit more about the role uh, and obviously the purpose behind the company. Yeah, the purpose behind the company is a very interesting, com it's a very interesting one. The company is uh, Portuguese owned by uh, some four people, which are also professors in the university. And they believe uh, in this action through science, which means what? That applying scientific thinking, i.e. Uh, logical scientific thinking and scientific methods to solve problems, business challenges that the companies may have. And this has a lot to do with... Um, uh, understanding factually, you know, what is happening in the companies. Why do the problems happen? Happening. What is the data that supports the problem? So it's managing not by feelings, which has some importance, of course, also to have some feelings, but but particularly to to manage based on scientific knowledge. So this is the, um, the core value of the company. This is, this, this is uh, what the company believes. I think it's very interesting. I'm a very analytical person as well. So I strongly believe and in the in this in the power of data, in the power of the facts, in the power of understanding the root causes, so you can uh, progress. And actually, this is a Japanese culture. Yeah. The Japanese believe that if you go really to the root cause, then you can solve the problem. And, and, and you should invest a lot of time on going, understanding the problem and understanding the root cause. Because right. if you do, then it's very easy to solve it once you understand exactly why is happening the problem. Right. And this is what, we are, what I try to do and what I try to apply on all the work I do. I'm responsible for the consulting delivery at winning. So basically, I'm not a commercial guy. I'm not selling projects to customers. Uh, there are other people who do that. I'm, I'm responsible and I manage the team of people that delivers consulting projects to customers, okay? So currently mm -hmm. I have a set of, uh, of uh, projects that I'm dealing with in my company. We are, just to give you an example, we are working for the biggest uh, hospital in Lisbon to do some re uh, re engineering in a certain area. We are working towards a pharmaceutical, in a pharmaceutical business, implement in a pharmaceutical company, implementing agile ways of working. I am working on a major insurance company uh, helping them to set up their project management structure we are helping the the state railway in portugal also to implement their project their projects for the triennium etc etc so it's hey. very it's very variable it's very right. <laughs> the variety is big it can go from uh, from state companies or state agencies, government agencies to private companies. It can go from a small project, a small project of two or three months to big projects yeah. that, that last for two or three years. Okay, right. so I have a team of, I have a group of uh, of people, and I manage, uh, I manage the consulting uh, area. On top of it, I'm also a trainer. 
we do provide some training on some specific skills. I am the trainer on some skills that the winning is, is known for. Namely, I'm a trainer on customer focus, uh, customer experience, and on benefits management. Okay. Right. Uh, and we also do some staffing, i.e. outsourcing, some research and some right. selection. So it's basically this, this is my role uh, in winning. Part of my role, there is the agreement between winning and Tagus Park mm -hmm. for doing the inter for doing the mentorship. Right. And I'm 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 doing the mentorship in Tagus Park with a lot of pleasure. Okay, so it is one of the things that I really enjoy. Right doing it doing on a regular basis so this mentorship is part of a protocol between tagus park and between winning so, so let's let's talk a little bit about uh, the mentorship side of tagus park because obviously um you know a lot of a lot of key challenges you know that startups and entrepreneurs are facing i mean like i i i know a lot about <laughs> being an entrepreneur and, and going through a lot of those challenges but, but talk a little bit about you know being a mentor there and, and what are some of the, I guess, like the, the typical challenges that, that these startups and entrepreneurs are facing? Yeah, it's very interesting because I, I, we have, uh, the incubator is quite big. There are some, there are many entrepreneurs uh, there. They are in diff completely different stages in their, uh, in their business models. Yeah. So some of them are at the launch phase like you they are some of them are in a more developed phase where you already have the product you already have have your service and you are trying to expand it um, so what i do as a mentor is really to focus i would say in three key areas four key areas four four areas that i have uh, uh, that i have to help them uh, thinking a little bit structured. First of all, I would say some business knowledge, particularly on how to run a business, what are uh, the factors, the success criteria, what are the elements that you have to look into, because you have a very business part in your company. Right. So, so that is something that I try to provide, some advice, some, um, some piece of advice, some uh, references, on business knowledge. That will be the first element. Mm -hmm. The second element is about business development, okay? Oh, yeah. So also some insights and some help on how to sell more, how to reach certain market segments, uh, challenging if the market segments are those one, those or if we need to go to another ones, uh, not only market segments, geographies, uh, types of products, etc. So everything about business development, yep. normally or typically, also it is one of the vectors, one of the drivers that we approach, that I approach a lot in, uh, in the mentorship because they ask me a lot about insights and about advice on business development. So first business knowledge, second business development. Then a third element that is also, that I've been providing mentorship and help, it's about financing, okay? Getting uh, investors, how do we do a presentation to show to investors? How can we, how can we, do investor search, how should we approach them, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. For instance, as an example, this weekend it's going to happen in Uiras, in the municipality where Tagus Park is based, a thing which is called Pitch at the Beach. So it's it's an idea that was imported from abroad, from other countries. And basically it means that. It means that at the beach there, in, a, in one of the Welsh beach, on a very casual and informal way, investors are invited to be there and, uh, and um, startups are going to be at the stage for 10 minutes uh, to present their ideas. One of the, um, one of the startups that is going to present 
uh, this weekend is one of uh, the entrepreneurs that we have there on Tagus Park. So we were doing the dry run yesterday. Mm. So they we, we agreed on the we agreed not. I, I mean, I gave them some advice some weeks right. ago on the structure of the presentation, the structure right. of of the of this of the pitch yesterday we we were doing we did a dry run i was very honest to them i mean i told them look you don't need to get into consideration what everything i'm telling you i'm just telling you what i felt what i think was the 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 history the story that you are telling if it makes sense or no okay. the flow and the rhythm behind it etc so this is uh, this is very important because it's an, a support activity for them to get uh, investors. So right. that will be the third, uh, the third element. And the last element, which I, I've been also providing some uh, mentorship because the, there are a lot of doubts about it, yeah, is yeah. about recruiting, how to recruit people, what kind of skills do we need, uh, how do we do it? Uh, how do we run an interview? Uh, how do we make sure that the people have the right skills based to match uh, the, the 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 small team that we have here? So yeah. that will those will be mainly the four areas that I've been working at Tagus Park as a mentor: business knowledge, business development, financing slash investors and HR advice, particularly on recruiting, okay? It's pretty much the four critical points, though, if you think about it in the, in the business life cycle. I mean, like, one, you got to crack your business model. Two, you got to yeah. buy a fire. You, you, you need money or you're dying. And third, if you yeah. don't hire the yeah. right people, you Absolutely. Know, yeah. it costs a lot of money. But, uh, but, but I'm excited to, I mean, like, you, you might have seen it too, but we're also going to be pitching at the pitch at the beach. So we'll see you. We'll see you there. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Well, we, we we plan to win the entire thing. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> um that, that's not an important part of the podcast. Um and anyways, like I wanted to talk a little bit about um just your role as well, you know, working as a professor at, at Porto Business School for, for over 15 years now, which is you know uh, cool quite 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 some time. And I mean like through that also you've been you know, working closely with students, uh, you know, in, in different kind of, you know, areas. And if you wanted to, like, you know, highlight, I guess, touch upon some of the key barriers they, they often face early in their, in, in their business career, like, what, what are some of the things that you kind of, like, come across and that's been, like, very uh, typical yeah. for them? Yeah. Uh, the typical things I came across is that the majority of them thinks – that the barriers that they face early on are technical, technical knowledge. You know, they all think that I need technical knowledge because I'm going to be an engineer or a manager or whatever in a company. And they all think that technical knowledge is very important. And my role as a professor, and of course, I have some uh, some uh, teaching materials that uh, they need to learn and I have some objectives with my discipline that they need to get but more than uh, addressing technical the technical perspective I try to address them the soft skills and the behaviors and the results and and the orientation that the majority of the companies is looking for because right Everybody, just to give you a, a very a very quick example, everybody can can be an engineer, okay, with a very high grade and be a very technical knowledge, but not everybody has the right behavior or the right attitude, and that is very important. You can be a very bright person, very knowledgeable, but if you don't have the right skills to interact with others. To promote, um, to promote circular knowledge, uh, as I call it, around you. And if you are not orientated towards results and managing a team, and you are not a nice person, <laughs> etc., etc., I mean, you fail. You are going to be a complete failure. You can be the brightest, the most intelligent people person in the world that you will not succeed because you are you are not we are not 
we've never been, and we are now particularly, we are, we are even, today it's even more clear that we are not, we are not alone, we need each other. We need each other in the companies, we need each other, colleagues I mean, we need each other uh, um, abroad, you know, beyond the companies. We all work interacted. We need governments to, to work with them. We need an agency to work with them. We need everybody. So it's very important that people, and people don't get, I, I don't know, in some other countries, I, I, I have no, uh, not a long experience on education in other countries, but in Portugal, all the education is very much focused on the technical side of the things, okay? Yeah. Not on the managerial or on the right. skill base that you need to have. So I tried to put some hints and some pieces of uh, behaviors, of uh, orientation to results, of priority setting, of attitude, and so on. A lot of them via storytelling and via uh, case studies. So they understand that to succeed, it's, it's as much as important to have technical knowledge as to have the right attitude and the right, and the right soft skills. Well, and it's 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 a very critical part that I think you know education in general might might be, um, you know it it's it's sometimes hard to focus enough on, and I think you know it's easy to kind of, to kind of like go the 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 pure you know academic knowledge science science route, and I think like you know the the, the if we're looking a little bit on the upside here though is that um, the, the students are sitting and often coming up with very new and, and great knowledge, right? That, that can kind of like help change the industry or help, you know, educate the industry in whatever field that they're doing. But then it's again, like, how do you transfer that knowledge or, or showcase that knowledge to, you know, the business, to the sectors in order to bring that value. And if you don't teach, teach those ways, it, it, it's hard, right? And this is why it's so critical Absolutely. to learn Absolutely. that working, to, to learn how to, you know, to, to public speaking, to like, you know, put yourself out there because those are the factors. And I, and I had, had a very good, um, you know, reminder from like uh, one of the interviews I did like way, 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 way back when I was doing my master. And I spoke to like the CMO of uh, Boston Red Sox. And he, he told me like, we're always open for new ideas, but you have to kind of like, you know, put like, if you don't say it, nobody's going to know, like you have to, you have to tell us about it. And so yeah. he just talked about that and, you know, being able to step up and just taking that responsibility and, and, and showcase, because a lot of the times, like we have great ideas and great knowledge and, and it's, it's all about just putting it out there. It doesn't mean you will get a yes every time, most likely not, but if you don't take the opportunity, nothing, nothing is going to happen. So that's kind of like the first, for first step, nonetheless. Um, but Ole, you know, that's where I was very lucky when I joined a company like PNG, because right. Procter and Gamble they understand that, right? So they train you and they help you to develop those skills. So I was right. very, very lucky, yeah. Because when I was in the university, I didn't know how to make a presentation, and I didn't hundreds of presentations right. but i didn't know how to do it it yeah. was when i joined png that yeah. that somebody sometime that somebody told me look you have to do this this and this you have to tell a story you have to use right. certain kind of words etc yeah. and this is how uh, this is what i try to also pass on you know i'm not right. the kind of person that thinks that if i went through some difficulties everybody has to go through through them no no absolutely not it's right. uh, it's um, it's helping them all right. hundred percent. And I mean, like, just, just, just to kind of like, before we uh, go over to, to, to the questions from Natalia and Bill, uh, I wanted to just ask like, kind of like a final, final, final question here from, from, from my side. And I just wanted you to kind of like, you know, briefly just touch a little bit upon, uh, you know, we talked a lot about research, you know, business, startup landscape. And if you wanted to like, you know, I guess like briefly touch upon like some areas that you think is worth exploring these days for, for these upcoming business leaders, because I think a lot of the challenge is that there's so much information going on, right? There's, there's so many areas you can explore and there's so much that is happening. And if like, just 
combining all of this stuff, like what are some, I guess, areas that is just maybe a little bit more extra work, um, you know, keeping an eye on these days? Well, everything related nowadays to artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, etc. I think those are areas that I see mm -hmm. or the entrepreneurs that are on Tag Spark, right. they all have uh, uh, nice algorithms, good algorithms, innovative algorithms to do something on a, on a, on an intelligent, automated way. I think this is uh, this is still a tendency, a trend, and it, it's going to be there for many many years. In yeah. my opinion, it's just starting. Okay. 100%. The other area which I think we should be always open and aware is about making discoveries about uh, we as consumers um, have. Because the world is changing, our needs are changing, and uh, the companies or the people who can understand beforehand and discover those trends, so very much focused on customer experience on looking at what is the experience of consumers uh, when they buy, when they experiment something, when they use something, when they pay something. I think there is a lot of, there are a lot of opportunities, whatever it is the area from uh, a pharmaceutical company to a bank, to a supermarket, I think there are hundreds of opportunities. Mm -hmm. and, and then I also think that uh, the telecommunication, enabled, the enabling of the telecommunication with the Internet of the Things and with, um, with, uh, with the possibility of getting data from, uh, from many devices, this, right. is, uh, this is a green field that is going to be exploited in the coming, in the coming years. Think about cars with people that uh, uh, with, with us not driving cars. Think about going to the supermarket and uh, according to the level of uh, what we have in our fridge or, or in our refrigerator, we do the shopping based on that or, or based on certain events, etc. Yeah. So for me, it's a lot about, uh, about this. And then it's about people's skills as well. I think it's about areas of time management and work balance, work-life balance. I think this is going to be also very important in the future because I also see a trend that more and more people want to work, but they want to enjoy life. They want to okay. live their life, okay, particularly. So 100%. all these things that uh, balance the life. I mean, I was, for instance, I was... Um, Last two weeks, I was on vacation for 12 days. Yeah, It was the best vacation ever because I didn't open my phone. I, did, I didn't bring the computer with me. I was really on vacation. And I think we need that, you know? Yeah. I need that to be more productive when I'm back yeah. because I'm a better person, a more balanced person in the end. Right, no, That's I, it, I, 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 no I, I think it's a, I think it is a per perfect way to, to segue uh, over. And uh, yeah, I mean, like it's, it's a really valuable, you know, insights is a really valuable kind of, you know, tips and, and areas that people need, need to keep their eye on for sure. But let's, uh, let's move on to the last uh, segment. All right, so I mean, like we're we're, we're literally, literally just gonna segue over here to the main people in the podcast, and I'm sure both Natalia and Bell have been like just eagering, waiting, and and, and annoyed listening to, to my questions. <laughs> but uh, but it's your your time now to to shine and uh, and and ask ask your question to Louis and uh, wherever you want to go first, go ahead and, and Louis, you know you're you're more than happy to answer. I'm go first. <laughs> So first of all, um, nice to meet you, Luis. What an amazing career story. And starting is always difficult. And about your beginning of your car career, um, what's the biggest difficult you went through? And what's a mentor? What's the biggest advice you give for us and all these this people? Yeah, it was nice to meet. It is nice to meet you also, Natalia. 
Uh, the biggest uh, challenge I had early on in my career was to exactly understand what I wanted to do. You know, for some time I, I knew things that I did not want to do. And I start to narrow my choices. And then as I was explaining to you, I took um, a risky choice. I even had a family conflict because of it, of it, because my father thought how it is possible that you are a civil engineer and you now are going to work on customer service and distribution in a multinational company. But then um, I always th think the challenge is about focusing a lot on where you are, what you do. So whatever you do, whatever you are, just have the right attitude and go for it full blast, 100%, 120% where you are. That's the, the biggest piece of advice that I can give to anybody. Because I see many people sometimes, ah, yeah, this is uh, just a little bit uh, because I have to work, so I'm here because I have to do something. No, no, you don't have to do something. <laughs> you have to really take on it, you know? So attitude and applying really, really, really be, be on it. Because if you do it, they, you will get the rewards. The rewards will, will start to come to you because people will realize how you are, how you, uh, what kind of people you are, what kind of uh, uh, attitude you have, and, uh, and the rewards will come. So that will be my biggest piece of advice early on on the career and not only early on it's something that it is uh, throughout you know uh, later on the same thing every single opportunity take it on full blast okay then the other thing that i do and i normally uh, also give this advice is if you are into a future opportunity close the doors behind you very well closed you know that's past future is the talk you know that's about the present and the future so don't think about the past the past is important as a background as learning experiences and so on but you have a future ahead of you so this is where you should focus and you should put all your bets all your time that's it basically awesome thank you so much yes awesome cool um well you want to Want to go for it? Yes. Nice to meet you, Luis. And what was your biggest achievement on your career? What is your next goal? All right. So nice to meet you also, Bell. I would say that um, it's difficult for me to to quote just one achievement because I, there are many things I, uh, I am very proud of having achieved. I am very proud of having achieved, for instance, when I was in PNG, a merge between Portugal and Spain without uh, any casualties, I mean, without any people in, uh, unsatisfied on the way. Yeah. I'm very... Um, I'm very proud of having uh, having had the opportunity to lead an extraordinary uh, an extraordinary team in Optimus, the operator, the mobile operator where I work in telecommunications, and to to be able to transform a team which was totally demotivated into a full motivated team delivering business results. Okay. Or uh, I'm also very proud to develop the consultants uh, in, our, in my current projects, to have people which are uh, fresh from the university and teaching them uh, how to make a presentation, how to speak with the customer, uh, what are the words that you must say, you should say, and you should not say, et cetera. So uh, highlighting one is difficult. <laughs> there are so many, okay? But uh, probably the most rewarding are about business achievement, big business achievement, but particularly about people achievement and people development. Seeing people that uh, uh, work with me, being developed, being better, better people, not only better professionals, but also better people on the way. I think this is the most important achievement. And you are next to go. Sorry? You are next to go. 
yes, my next to go. I don't know. I'm, I don't. Uh, I don't think a lot on it. Uh, currently, I'm I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. Really, I'm a very satisfied person. My goals currently in my life they are not about uh, achieving a certain status or a certain amount of money. It's about doing a very interesting job, and I'm getting this currently. I'm doing very a very interesting job. I'm seeing a lot of different realities from a business standpoint of view, and I'm also having the opportunity to develop lots of people. So I'm very happy nowadays. Great. Awesome. Thank you. No, you're welcome. So now I'm mean, like, yeah, I'll, I'll give uh, if you guys have like any other question that you want to, you know, put put out now. Now's your chance uh, or, or we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. It's up to you too. Um, Natalie, Bell, any any other thoughts? Um, I don't Comment. think so. <laughs> well, yes. all the good luck to you too, Natalia and Bell, so and to all the mentees of uh, of Sportin. I mean, uh, you 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 are doing a great job, also, Ole. Uh, you and your team, you are doing a great job because it's very important these uh, mentorship, also sessions, and helping people to find their way. So, all the good luck with the help of Sportin on the yeah, way. I pre appreciate that, mm -hmm. Louis, and. Uh... I mean, like, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's always good for, I always say this too, it's like, I'm, I'm very lucky to, to have podcasts now, like, I think like over probably like 120 people at this point, And like, they all have different stories and different insights, right? And it's a great way to learn, yeah. you know, and I always try to learn as much as I can from, from each, e each conversation. Um, and, uh, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's interesting as well, like just hearing kind of like your philosophy, your mindset, kind of like how you're thinking as well. And, seeing like kind of like how that aligns with sporting global how we we see a little bit you know the the future and like what are some of the things that are missing out there in the sport industry and sports education so i think to, to think it's good to know that we're kind of like on the right path and uh, we're glad to obviously help you know uh people like natalia and dal you know to to take that take that next step in the industry and i mean like at the end of the day like uh it's about helping people, right? And so well, that's yeah. also what it comes down to, I think, at the end of the day. Um, so, so with that, Luis and Natalia and Bell, I would like to thank all of you for, for taking the time. You know, it's been a lot of fun, a little bit different format this time. And I hope uh, those that are, you know, been watching, listening, you know, from wherever you are in the world, I hope you enjoy it. And if you haven't, you know, make sure to like the video, subscribe as well to our YouTube channel so you get weekly weekly tips and insights from industry leaders uh for people in the, in the sport industry sharing their insights their tips and of course if you haven't you know subscribe and sign up at sporting global for free get get tips connect with the right kind of people find jobs find courses all the things you do in order to have the best way to enter the sport industry and so finally you know my my my, my last my last little challenge to all of you which we always have to do on our podcast is that we have to we have to finish up with a little bit Norwegian. So we gotta we gotta teach you all a little bit Norwegian. I, I know Natalia and Bell, I've heard it a few times already, but uh, now now is the real deal. Now is the real deal to practice here. Uh, so with every video we do, we always finish with V snakkes, which means see you later in Norwegian. So that's what you all have to say. So go for it, V snakkes. <laughs> Can you repeat, please? <laughs> what is it? V snakkes. V snakkes. <laughs> there we go. Good job, Louis. Well, Natalia Bell too. You know, you're on the spot here. Yeah. Uh, you, have, you have to say it as well. V snakkes. V snakkes. Good job, Bell. V snakkes. V snakkes.